All right, in this video, I'm going to show you how to create some automatically closing pop-up windows, drawers, or whatever you want to call them. So here we have three buttons. We have button one, something pops up. After three seconds, it's going to automatically go away, as you can see there. Not only that, I can tap on this one. If I want to open up my second one, the one goes away. I can come over here to three. And these are all working together. And after three seconds, any one of these windows will automatically close. We can go in between any of these, which automatically closes the one prior. But again, the automatic deal. So I'm sitting here talking, I'm not clicking on anything, and three seconds later, it will go away. You can adjust that time to your liking. Now, to accomplish this in KOWP, I'm using a list global as well as three on-off switches because I have three things getting animated. So my list global here, I call it check, and I have three values, one, two, three. You can name these whatever you want. I just called it one, two, three. Maybe you want a weather or a music and all that good stuff popping up separately. You can name it that if you want, but for simplistic purposes, one, two, and three. And then I have three on off switches because I have three things getting animated. One switch, two switch, three switch. Notice I had one, two, three in my list global. So I have one, two, three for my switches as well. Tapping on one of these, let's go and see how this looks. The auto on is set to manual, auto off is manual and timer, and you can use any number of seconds that you want. The same applies to two switch and three switch. Now back inside of items, I have three overlap groups. The first overlap group is simply going to be this one that you see here. I have a rectangle inside of that with the text one. The overlap group number two, that's going to be this rectangle that you see animating here with the number two in it. And then I have the overlap group three. I have three basic buttons, they are circles, this first circle here, and then these two here are very similar as well. So let's talk about these buttons before we get into the animation and the code. This first button here, this circle, of course you can use anything that you want, but underneath the touch menu, I have it set to do two things. One of those is toggling that one switch, that on off switch. Since this is my first button, I want to cut that switch either on or off but I also want to toggle that list global that I've called check and the entry that I'm picking is one. So when I touch this button, this will make one open or it will make it close. But bear in mind, if I open it like you see here, after three seconds, that on off switch will automatically cut off, which did close this window there. I'll show you how that code works right here in a second. Very similar for buttons two and three. I'll come to this third one here. If we head over to the touch, we are toggling the three switch on off switch and for the list global, we are changing that to three. The same applies to this second switch here. Just make sure you change those touches accordingly. Now let's go back to the overlap groups. So for this first overlap group where I have the rectangle and the text one, that is going to be this one right here. For its animation, I have it doing two things. I have it set to fade in and scroll inverted. Now you can use whatever animations you want, and maybe you even want to add another animation for when you're scrolling across various pages, Maybe you want it to fade in or out based on what page you're on, but that's not what I'm talking about here. So for the fade in, if we come to the code, here's what we want to happen for this thing to fade in. Our GV check, that list global must be equal to one and GV one switch must be on. Custom automatically knows that I'm saying GV one switch must be on. If both of these conditions are met, that's why I have the and statement there. Very important to put an and statement. If this is true and this is true, we want to animate forward. Otherwise, we want to animate back. Checking on that. I have it set to fade. Of course, you can adjust all these settings to your liking. And if we come to the scroll inverted, guess what? Same exact code. I want it to fade in and scroll when GV check is one and GV one switch is on. Now, if one of these conditions are not met, it's going to fade back off and scroll back off the screen. And you guessed it, if we come into the other overlap groups, let me just jump over here to overlap group three, which is the one we have here. Underneath this animation, same two animations. I have it set to fade in for my code, GV check must be equal to three and GV three switch must be on. And since we have that three second timer or how many ever seconds you want, this GV3 switch, if it's on, it's going to automatically cut off after a certain amount of time. And when that happens, this condition here will not be true because of the and statement. Again, very important there. 
this must be true and this must be true in order for it to animate forward. If one of these or both of these are not true, it will animate back. So again, this is good for having weather menus, music pop-ups, anything like that. It's a nice way to automatically close a window for you and it works very well. And in all honesty, the coding there and all that, it's not too bad. So notice here, I can open and close these depending on which one I'm on. But again, the timer will kick that one back out after a certain amount of time. And there you have it, a quick way to automatically close windows or pop-ups inside of KOWP. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.